internet decided to go MIA a well so anyways but I think the little part that we were able to discuss I think we got as much in maybe just discussing a few things like that yeah I think we were able to get much in to be able to suffice my internet strike so yeah from here anyways from here it's enjoy it sorry that's all we could do and yeah anyways maybe some other day if the time comes or if we reach the space or we also find the time will we we, can, we will discuss more in detail and i will make sure that i share that but for now please enjoy the little that we could do but i want to quickly like talk to you about the next one that was why i i actually leave it there let me bring this down in here you know there are like some specific alert food that you can get when i came to nigeria that was back in 2014. back then i was in the space of like developing my spiritual journey you know like, like actually following through and that includes eating halal food because honestly you know it, like i said it's not a muslim society so you have to be cautious of like what you what you eat because people eat some um, bacon like pig like it's everywhere it's in the store so if you don't know if you don't read the label you won't know that you're not supposed to be eating what you buy so you have to be very cautious so when I came to Nigeria, we went to this um, canteen and we bought Amala, I think. Yeah, we bought Amala. And for me, I will only take fish. Because I know, like, if you can't get anything else, you can get uh, seafood. So I only take, I only, when they are asking, like, do you want um, homo and shaki and meat and all that, I said, like, just put fish for me. And it has talked to me since then. Because I feel like, as Nigerians, do we know where our meats come from? Like, I mean, they're canteen. Like, are we sure that it's um, halal? Are we? Like, oh, I love suya. When I went to Nigeria, I was like, I think I asked one of my cousins, like, is it halal? And he, I think he replied that it is. That's why we bought the, the suya that day. Because I know, you know there were so many, <laughs> there were so many, um, um rumors back in when i was in nigeria like in school like oh that's where it's not you know so we were like the use of human you know, like, mm, mm, where did you hear that where did you hear that like, i've heard of it where have you heard that can you give me a source so i know like the house are they usually like, if you go to Aumala, like the house are they be, like that is like more guaranteed that it will be halal but in other spaces, like, you know, like, honestly, Nigeria food is beautiful. But if I go to Nigeria, like, I'll probably still be saying, I like, just put fish in my, because I don't know, I'm not very sure about the, that's why I brought it up. That's why I'm like, I want to be sure. Like, do we, because canteen, like, I'll be like, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to tell them how to do their business. But at the same time, I want to be able to follow a certain guideline. You know what I mean? My friend will be like, I'm kind of extra like that. But I'm not extra. It's just like what I want to, like in a way that I can, I want to be able to observe. I know like for a long time, I followed the routine. And at a time, like I also fell down. Like I was like, I don't know, maybe out of um, laziness or weakness of faith, I also like dive into but then, like, now I'm just, like, now going back. Like, you know, I want to be, like, why did I stop anyway? Like, I, I mean, I start from that. Like, why did I stop anyway? So, I'm, so that's why I actually brought this up. Like, are we sure? Like, all this suya that we are eating, are we sure? Are they halal? I don't buy, in fact, I don't, in, in the half specific places, even to buy, go, go, to go to the market and buy meat to eat is, a very strenuous way yeah. of our conscious Muslim. Yeah. Around 
Mm-hmm. It has to be uh, an animal that, even if it is a real animal, probably yeah. a goat or sheep, mm-hmm. it has to be slaughtered in a way. In a certain way, way. yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm very that, cautious of. The animal that, mm-hmm. that has undergone, I mean, that was killed in a very cruel way, or probably a dead animal. Yeah, or so you know, sometimes, yeah, I know yeah. people try to like cut, um, take short cuts, but you know, if you are eating something and like, say, you're yeah, it. but you see all this, here yeah, and things like that. I don't, I prefer making them at home. Yeah, yeah. me too. So you were saying, also, I mean, to certain extent, you have to you know, there are some outside, like yeah, they also take short cuts that are not skilled in an ally or by a person who's, who's I mean. Who is not beautiful to align? No, just just have to be very careful. Oh, okay. You know, you know one, one thing. Hold on. Can I say we have less than one minute? But I also want to talk about this um, share thing. So, like uh, next time, I just want to tell you what I'm feeling now, so we you can see where I'm coming from. So, do you want to maybe talk like five minutes back on, and then we can be done? I don't think we know that. You know, that one. You know, there's so many other chances in your bar like that. Uh, yeah, but, you, but uh, actually shows that you say just people say people say those words unconsciously. Like, I I don't know uh, Majua. I don't know Majua. Oh yeah, Baba Melis. Oh yeah, Baba Melis. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, Baba Melis. <laughs> if our day is is um is a day to you do believe to bring money that is a, I mean that is a child of money. Can you say that again? Aj, Aj. Oh, so the Aj yes. is so sex now. Abi. No. When you go say hello, when uh, someone is telling something, they say hello, oh, my joy. Aj or something like that. People say uh, all chances like that, and actually Aj is. You know, I think I think you're right, but I think like in the more literal sense, I think you're just. Oh, yeah, you're not. And then you say, Oh, yeah, you're not. Oh, yeah, you're not. You know, I, I want to say that me unconsciously, and you know, you can't, I guess you can't take the the culture. I don't, but can we even say the culture? Or maybe it's, um, it's an expression that people believe in. And I guess um, if if you don't know, they say that you won't be persecuted for what you don't know. You know, you know what I mean. Yeah, am I am I right? Is that right? right. But there are, some, there are some that are actually attached to our beliefs. Some people are saying it's not unconscious, but they actually believe in this thing. Yeah, yeah. Like you know, if because I've heard it so many times, like unconsciously. I think people say that like oh yeah yeah no bill oh yeah yeah no wall oh yeah yeah no wall oh yeah baba me do oh yeah baba me mosu oh yeah baba me mosu like if you are saying that like it, it's becoming I I feel like maybe it's kind of exhausting like people exhaust like say it a lot and like mm. and you know honestly I was thinking correct me if my if I'm wrong a shared definition is um when you're invoking something else other than Allah to come to your aid or to do something for you. That's the definition, Abby. Am I right? Exactly. So you are not supposed to be the exclusive rights of Allah. You're not giving mm-hmm. this. Yeah, so when you I, I mean, I'm not a scholar. I'm going from that um definition. I'm just like, so when you start saying that only ya me bamu, only baba me bamu, only something a muscle long is this like part of it? And do people actually know this? Because I don't think people know. What those things are shape, honestly. Yeah, are, you know, I don't mean, know where, but these are open. People are getting more aware. This is Before you say echo, I say echo, what numbers are they more? Oh, okay. are oh. more. That in this are. Uh, because we have scholars who are actually addressing those issues. Because okay. I, I don't. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. The heavens is 
the owner of the heavens and the earth and everything and the universe. So won't say our law now. Law doesn't I mean um capture doesn't capture the meaning, the actual meaning of Allah. People are beginning to say Allah Allah instead of Allah and Allah. No people are getting more aware of. No, I prefer look sometimes. In fact, I have some people who are saying, who will say, 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 who will I say so yes now. Actually, that in my own, I mean, in my own conviction, I feel like if I see people looking, what I mean is that I want to go and examine my son, right? But I don't think that there is anything wrong with people looking. Yeah, me too. I'll say, I'll say there is nothing wrong with that. I say, fellowship so now. Alone, instead of alone, things like that. But even so, I mean, you can say Eli do marry or Olu do marry and be like, Mufel or Ki marry. Like, Mufel or Ki, Mufel or Ki marry. Like, <laughs> it's still, you know, I like this. Alone is alone. Yeah. They are sure. They are always yeah. that. Only stem from your back culture. And as I'm saying, yeah. But the thing is, I think we, we have to be careful about, you know, trying to sanction um, people's language, you know? Because you can pray to Allah in any language. That's, let's start, actually, let's start from there. If you can't say Arabic or if you don't know how to read Arabic, you can, you, you can just keep silent and, like, be thinking or, like, and if you actually want to make it so that you, like, it's a, it's a language. You cannot sanction language like that. I mean, imagine like um, people that have been living 100 years, like they're 90 year old, and you now want to tell them that what they are doing for this while is wrong, and you're trying to kind of like maybe lecture them. Like they're 90 years old. Like what are they doing? And learning is not, um, doesn't stop anywhere, doesn't stop at any age. But at that age, you still have to kind of find a way how to like. Uh, the subtle is the way we explain things to them. Make yeah. Them understand. Yeah. So the zombie that we put the right thing. Just keep explaining to them. We explain it to them in a way they will understand. So even if you are more than a hundred years and what you are doing is wrong for all this past years, when well, they tell you this is the right thing, just have to abide by this. Yeah. That is Islam. No, Islam is just have to accept what's the defense of Islam. Yeah. Question. Yeah, of so, course. We as a younger generation, as younger generation, just have to explain it to them in a way that will make them understand. Not that we will say, not tell them how they cannot change it. They just have to change it. <laughs> they have to change it. So we make them understand why mm -hmm. they should spend those things to something else, to so something more acceptable. When we hear that this one is, oh, this one is wrong. Is right. You just have to try our best to change. Because yeah. you don't know the one that's going to be the right going to accept. Yeah, of course. Yeah, like you know, I understand what you're saying. Like I, I don't even know how I call, came about it, but I guess maybe it's something that's just come out. I've been here. I hear this thing quite a lot, and people just throw it around. But if you translate it. And you kind of see what the shirt means, and it's like, mm, I don't think, I don't, I mean, sometimes you want to be like, should I leave them to their, to their misinformation or ignorance? That's correct, with your, with your hands. People are using your hands, you have to use your mouth. There are no other people using your mouth, you have to use your hands. If you are permitted, we try our best to correct people. But what we know, but if you don't know something now, and it is it is uh it is a responsibility of every one of us to bless people, correct people. Don't see wrong things in the society. You just have to correct them. Yeah. I am coming to the level of our uh, uh, capability. If you are if you are, if you are capable of using your hands, you can use your hands. If you are using your mouth, 
people you can talk to like you don't yeah let's mm-hmm. the reason like this you know yeah them about it. yeah where like, uh, you cannot you will not be listened to them just use your mind and have the feeling that oh my god this is not this is not right yeah <laughs> You know, it is. I'm. I'm so glad that I'm talking to you about it. It's now because I'm like, should I not say anything and should I leave people to the misinformation or the ignorance? Like, should I leave it? Like, I bet like people don't know this, or they probably are not very conscious that it can be. It can loosely translate to you are trying to call some other than Allah to come and help you in a way. Even if you're just throwing it out. You know, and, we, and at the end of the day, even if you just smirk or you make fun of someone or you eye someone, you're still communicating and we're going to be responsible for what we for whatever we say or however we use or communicate with to people. So even if you're just saying that you're just throwing this thing around, ah uh-uh. like Words add weight. Words add weight. You know, I mean, people can say that, like, in, for like, as an argue, as their argument, they can be like, ah, so be. I'm just saying it for as a something reason. Like, you know, when it comes to Allah, I mean, Allah wants you to have fun, but there is a regard that you have to. And one more thing is, shirk is one the sin that Allah does not forgive. Right? Never. Never forgive. It's something that I want us to talk about. Maybe if we, I mean, I know we are not all scholars, but if we go from what we know about Islam and about the definition of scripture, we can explore that. Because when you do all this uh, Ramadan lecture, the, uh, like all those hafa in Nigeria, I don't ever hear them say it, and I'm like, no, I'm not trying to take space here. I'm just trying to, like, you know, impose maybe a word or two, something that I have noticed. And I don't know. I don't think I do it. I hope I'm not. I hope not. Like, I, as I feel, I hope not. As you know, as a writer, and you know, in the writing space now, everybody is using magic. They are writing in a way that, you know, I started questioning myself, like, what I because I wrote this um story and I was like and you know I explored the Yoruba mythology, you know, all those Obatala and what do you call them? Oja, Yimaja, you know, all this Yoruba mythology deities and I explored and I and I used that ideology in that book. And I'm like, you know, let's sit back and shall what did we do here? Like is there any part of this that is wrong? to do because me i go online i be like such like can you as a muslim write about fiction fiction books write about fiction that deals with you know dirty what i read what i saw was like or read was like it is permissible that's what they say but every time i still get very very conscious like is this is this legit like can i actually write this just going back and just kind of reflecting on what I wrote. And I was like, you know, hold on a minute. Is this right? I've seen another girl. She's actually in Ikabi too, like you. And she wrote this um, fiction, like very successful, very successful. And she's in Ikabi. I read the book. She taught, um, she used um, the Arabian kind of um, mythology in hers and she wrote about um, the magical world of the, um, the space, that she, the, fiction, the fictional world that she built. She used magic and all that, like all those, like, see, I, I, I forgot, I forgot, but honestly, she's a Mikabe like you. So imagine, and I'm like, if she writes, if she can write this, maybe I can too, maybe I'm not falling in there because i was i was like i want to be sure no but you know like you 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 do this thing and you like uh i want to be sure i don't i like you wouldn't want to fall into that trap of shaitan i, I mean i pray for success and i pray for guidance in what i do so i want to be sure if you're writing this as a fictional writer do you feel that i mean like do you have authority to write this 
Well, from what I read online, it's like you can. You can. I mean, if you you are using that idea to build a fictional world, you know that's the thing when it comes to like fiction and reality. You can be right and be like, the girl did. The girl bowed down to, and you're like, how how does this feel with me, like as a person? Like you start getting that kind of contact. No matter the material gain that you want to gain from this, you don't want to compromise your faith. That's just the way I see it, and I want to be sure to know. And from what I've read so far, I hope they are legit. I hope they implement because you know. Where where is the source? Where is the source that can deliver the source? So when um people give you when you ask questions and they give you answers like that, you just have to ask for for the evidence. Yeah, you know? yeah. Mm-hmm. So, then, uh, is it that you see, like, see something in relation to that in and or is it like, if you don't have any if you don't have any evidence from this, that means it's a no go area. You pass for two hours and things like that. Five hours and all I do is just come and say, okay, you can do this, you can do this, nothing wrong with you. And then, they tell me, okay, probably from the Quran and Sumer, they are able to give you a tangible one in other places and not go in. Yeah. Yeah. When it comes to, to, to from, I mean, I mean, in my, in my own view, when it comes to fiction, you are the creator of the story. And the one creating your power over your story, you have power to modify your characters the way you like. Yeah. Their faith, depend, their faith depend on you, right? You have to be very careful in things that we portray because as you are writing, you are telling, you are passing certain information to mention. She nails, she nails down for someone. <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. Like, of course, like kneeling down to faith. No, you know, you say you uh, you recognize that we have three religions. That's yeah. the most we have. Mm-hmm. In, in, our, in, in, in the law. I don't know how to say we have three religions. We have Islam, Muslim, and Islam. Yeah, yeah, of course, and yeah. Islam, actually, we say, uh, in the Jinnah, in the law, in Islam. The only religion that's the, that's we Allah recognizes is Islam. It's Islam, yeah. So, we have this belief that we still have other religions. Other religions. Yeah, a few. We also have religion like this. And I was like, you know what? Let, maybe it's an interesting topic to bring up here. Like, just talk about it. So I just want to give you like an overview of like where I'm coming from. So next time we talk, then it won't be like a strange topic. Like, where she, why is she even bringing this up? You know? <laughs> no, that's what. Cause, yeah, because when I when I wrote that day, I was like, mm, do people know where I'm coming from? It depends on her schedule, if she's able to join. I mean, this platform is open for everyone. Like, honestly. Like, just oh, like, I her. Like, thank you. Thank you. You make, you make this even more beautiful. When you have somebody to share your ideas with, to, you know, talk together, it's so much more beautiful. You make it more, much more beautiful. So thank you, Jazakal Hair. Thank you so so much. Jazakal Hair and like I don't know why I keep saying Hair. So I know you missed that one again. Jazakal Hair and Ramadan is working on me. At least I'm so so dry. It's like ah. So that's how we see it too. Ramadan is working. It's our last work. It's our last work. But Jazakal Hair. I was like, she was like, I was like eh, eh. some people be calling me madam. I'm like, excuse you, do I look like I'm 60 years old? How can you, like, how can you do that? <laughs> and honestly, like, somebody message, uh, wrote a comment and I was like, madam. I was like, well, who is madam? Who is your madam? <laughs> I feel like I'm 60 years old. But anyway, Sha, this was lovely. So thank you so much. Assalamualaikum. Have a nice iftar. It's a uh, have a nice iftar. We still have like about ten hours to go on my side. Ten hours, yeah, ten hours, like ten and a half hours. And you people will be eating in two hours, so you people will be eating in two hours. And I was in classroom for ten hours. Hey, Rajesh, just finish your stuff, so just love that day now. Really, ten, ten and a half hours. I'm still fasting for ten and a half hours. 
half hours and at 12 o'clock i'll just look at my phone and be like ah and if i is now eating iftar imagine if i'm just in nigeria i could just be eating iftar now the sun is still so bright and it was ramadan okay do you hear what i said 11 p.m so somehow we'll be fasting for 18 hours 20 hours Mm -mm. I swear, like we woke up five o'clock this morning, and mm -hmm. we are going to fast fifteen. No, we are fifteen and a half hours. So it's better this time. Mm -hmm. It's better now. It's better now. Say if the I mean, around what time do you break the fast? We break fast around eight thirty. Yeah. Yeah, eight thirty, and we we ate at five o'clock. We stopped eating at five o'clock because that's when Fajr is. So fifteen hours. You know, this is even better. If the Ramadan is in like three of is in three two three months, sometimes the Maghrib is at nine o'clock, ten o'clock, something like that. Nine ten. Um, so we've been fasting until like eleven p.m. I swear, like eleven p.m. and the sun is like. It's the just sunrise. 11 p.m. where it will just go 12 a.m. And the sun is wide and bright and shiny. And me, and we are just sitting like this. And me, that when we fast, I would, I would, it's like I shrink. I, sh I shrink. I shrink. And you know, <laughs> I look like a skeleton. <laughs> 11 p.m. We have not break our fast, and wow. I, and I think back then we used to eat like around 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m. for fast. So you're you're doing like almost 24 hours, just five hours less. Five oh, hours. Ah, honestly, that one is a bit. Rather, it's a beautiful experience. We're just taking it one day at a time. Um, and so this is the end of the conversation i hope you again i hope you enjoy it i hope you find it resourceful informative and everything like that and if you have any comments any notes any thoughts that you would like to share do share it i am open to learn to see your perspective and what do you think what do you think what do you think so anyways um so alaikum thank you for watching thank you for subscribing for liking for tuning in again Itaisha, and thank you and i will of course subscribe like share and comment and i'll see you some other time this Ramadan series, this is our season two. The last time we had four episodes, so this time we're having three episodes for obvious reasons. And so, again, yeah, it happens every time. It happens in Ramadan. Like, this conversation happens in Ramadan, only in Ramadan. And it's open, it's a free platform. Well, I want to make it a brief part one where we can share ideas and learn from each other. So, but anyways, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing, for liking. And um, if you have, again, anyways, I'm signing now. And thank you. And salam alaikum. Any notes I want to share? Mm, I don't think so. I think that's all. That is all. Bye. Bye. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure that's all. I'm pretty sure.